Mercy Ships is an international charity whose work can be presented in a row of figures. Since 1978, the fleet and land teams have served in more than 50 developing countries. Its current ship, moored off the coast of Freetown, capital of war-torn Sierra Leone, depends upon a rotating crew of 400, 99% of whom are volunteers from more than 40 nations. The ship is equipped with six operating theatres, runs a 78-bedded recovery ward, and over the next 12 months will benefit over 7,000 people through surgery, eye clinics, dental and other treatments. Behind all of these numbers are the aspirations and hopes of tens of thousands of the world's poorest. We're here to ask UK director Judy Polkinghorne about the issues of running a charity that spans so many countries and how such management is similar to running a business. Judy, let's start with some of the complexities of governance. For example, how does that work, working with so many different countries? Well, we've got 12 national officers and everybody has their own governance issues because they've all got their own law. Mm. Um, we're all associated by letters of association to the International Operations Centre in Texas. And it's the Operations Centre in Texas who receives the ultimate donations from all the countries worldwide and then uses them for programmatic work with the ship. And then how does it work from the point of view of associations and letters of agreement with countries that you may go in and do the work there and what kind of work that you do? How does all of that come together? That's all done through the International Operations Centre in Texas and you're invited into a country. We don't just pitch up and say we come to save the world. You know? um, the country will invite you and it will take 18 months on the average to go into a new country where we've never been before, setting up the niceties of the legalities and the protocols. And then three months before the ship goes, we have a group of people, all sorts of disciplines, from medical through to administration, through to sanitation, engineers, whatever, um, go into the country and prepare for the ship's arrival. Because you've got to get all sorts of infrastructure ready for her, you know, um, alongside the docks. As you mentioned, they're, they're, we've got a crew, we've got volunteers, we've got trainees, we've got all sorts of sort of different elements of sort of staff and staff welfare and management to look after as well. How does all of that come together? Well, the crew on the ship are 99.9% .9 volunteers. Mm. They're all raising their own support or they have private means, but there are a few of those. They come from 12 different nations. Uh, they volunteer through the work that each individual national office will be doing on exhibitions, conferences, attracting volunteers. We only have a very small uh, percentage of crew that are paid on the ship, and they tend to be marine or day workers, but our captain is a volunteer. It's, it's a, a remarkable thing in Mercy Ships that these people pay their own flights out to the ship, they pay their own way, and they're all under the management then of the chief executive on the ship. So who do you see as your ultimate customer, uh, in to, to use a sort of a business term? Would, you see, would that be the donor or the recipient? No, if you look at it in a business term, the, the um, customer has to be the patient. Mm -hmm. um, your shareholders are your donors. Mm -hmm. And they have a right to say what they think mm. about the material you're putting out or what you're doing in their country. Um, and um, that way, we, we are a true non-profit, but we are providing a service to customers. And the service is provided by the shareholders who are raising the money to make it happen. I think it's terribly important these days, corporate social responsibility. And they can take from the package what they want, but for us, Payroll giving is important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that doesn't cost the company money, mm -hmm. but it shows the employees that they're actually supporting mm -hmm. a charity. Um, major donations from companies, and they, of course they're getting corporation tax relief. And on top of that, we have a separate department which works in about four national offices around the world, which is called the procurement department. And we have a procurement department here with three staff who particularly target companies for gifts in kind. We procure to a ship's need list for the 12 months. So that can be anything from generators, cat scanners, mm. surgical instruments, toilet rolls, fruit and veg, marmite, am I allowed to say it? <laughs> anything, anything. You think of what you need in your daily life and all that mm. has to be taken mm. to the ship. 
We witnessed uh, the post bag arriving this morning, and this, of course, is from um, just ordinary citizens, it ordinary is. people. Tell us more about uh, that wonderful sight of the hall this morning. Well, you witnessed a small post this morning. <laughs> Normally it's three sacks full, something like that, but we're at the end of an appeal. We do monthly mail outs, monthly appeals, and that will bring us in over £1.2 million a year from the general public. And we also have very regular donors who are part of the regular giving plan. But we do around 30 to 40,000 letters a month to our warm database. And then we do around 30,000 10 times a year to new donor acquisition people. It's quite exciting, actually. It That's is. the way your database mm. grows. We're mm. very blessed here. Mm. And it must be sort of very heartwarming to see that sort of, you know, that still that sense of giving yes. from is. all quarters. And, and during the economic times we're in at the moment, where I think a lot of charities have been hit by the recession, we have been hit in the sense that our donations are smaller in amounts, but the numbers of donations have gone up. Mm. So last mm. year we processed over 96,000 donations in this office alone and raised over 4.2 million pounds. So that's pretty good. Long may it continue. Judy Polkinghorne, thank you very much for talking to us. My pleasure.